what's up guys, it's Fish here and welcome back to 1078 Medieval Wars. If you don't know what this is, basically it is a modification which adds in all the units from Medieval Kingdoms into the Attila Total War Age of Charlemagne campaign. So we actually have a mini Medieval campaign now which is really really awesome. So I want a massive shout out to the modders who made this mod and imported all the units from Medieval Kingdoms. And obviously a massive shout out to Warman and his team, the guys actually working on Medieval Kingdoms is absolutely awesome there is actually a new link for the mod and a mod page for it so i'll leave that in the link in the description so if you downloaded the previous one there is a new one now so make sure to go down and re-update your game so i asked you guys what faction you wanted me to play as as you can as you can see at the top you can play as a whole range of different factions and i held out a voting it was really really close but the factions in the end i think there was like a point in it was between the holy roman empire and the kingdom of england and i always like to have somewhat of a say in my campaign so I took the top two and I decided what one I think would be the best let's play. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing as the Kingdom of England. They are really awesome. Obviously, I'm English, so that's always good. And, uh, you know, I just feel like they have the largest unit roster, so that'll make for the most interesting gameplay uh, campaign. Just because we'll have so many different units, knights, longbows, and cavalry. It, it was just going to be really, really exciting. As well as that, I'm using one other mod which reduces the squalor or changes the squalor and happiness, how that works. So I'll leave that in the link in the description. There's also a battle modifier which slows down the battles, which I might use. I need to test it out first, but we might use that as well just for some more interesting battles. It also changes like cavalry and longbows around quite a lot, which I think will be quite interesting. But I want to test it out first before we start. So England have some unique traits. I'm not sure if this is actually the uh, the the previous faction. I can't remember what faction. Mercy. I'm not sure if this is Mercy's traits or what. Uh, but yeah, basically when we're uh, when we fight a defensive battle, we will get double replenishment after that battle, which is really good. And as well as that, we get extra income from every unit we destroy, which I, I'm more than happy to take. We'll have our knights run down the enemy. Uh, which will be cool. So yeah, we're playing on very hard, obviously. I don't like playing on Legendary because Legendary, I feel like it just gets rid of a, a whole bunch of stuff and doesn't really make the enemy that much harder. It just kind of gives them unfair bonuses. So we'll be playing on very hard. It should definitely be interesting. And the interesting thing about England as a faction is a lot of their strength comes from their vassals. So I believe he's made it because he's changed the way diplomacy works and the starting diplomacy for all the factions and the start positions. And, and they also have another mod in this mod which changes the campaign cities to look a lot more medieval with the, the round turrets instead of the, the square like kind of more Romany type castles. So hopefully we'll, that will kind of add immersion to the game. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying, like, there's a ton more vassals in the game. So I believe England have the Duchy of Brit uh, Brittany as their ally. Uh, we'll skip back because that's just the Age of Charlemagne the intro, which we don't need. And also, this is the same as, uh, this is Mercia's intro. So obviously, it's Age of Charlemagne. It's extremely hard to mod Attila campaign. So the fact that they've kind of got this much detail in already, you know, you kind of just have to put up with all the, the additional Age of Charlemagne stuff. You know, we got, like, this... The mission issues, like a lot of the, the grand missions will be like, you know, transform Mercia into the Kingdom of England. But we you know, we already are the Kingdom of England. But you kind of just have to put up with it, you know, and just enjoy the campaign as, as you can now recruit medieval units. And it pretty much is, you know, the best we're going to get for a little while until medieval kingdoms gets out their grand campaign. But yeah, as I was saying, I can kind of show you as I say it now. If we go to diplomacy, we can see that as the Kingdom of England, I have three vassals. The, the Duchy of Brittany... We have Nottingham and we have York. And realistically, York and Nottingham are probably both stronger than me. And Brittany as well are probably all stronger than me, you know, just size-wise, wealth-wise. So keeping them on side, keeping the, the campaign, you know, you know, keeping my vassals on side is going to be so important in this game. Obviously, taking out, like, one of them at a time just to expand my own borders could definitely be a good idea. But realistically, we want to try and make uh, make them as good friends as possible because we do have sold some territory in Normandy, and you know the French are massive. The French have a, such a strong um, strong empire starting off, and they also have you know Aquitaine on them, and I believe they also have Toulouse uh, down here somewhere. The Holy Roman Empire has a ton of battles. They have Milan, they have the Swiss, they have Saxony and Bavaria all onto them as well. They are the strongest faction to begin with. Um, then I believe, oh no, the French are only the third strongest, so who is? Is it Spain? I don't think we can even find Spain yet. 
yeah, Spain have not been discovered yet, unfortunately. But yeah, I imagine because we're what? We have a seventh strongest faction to begin with, but we do have a lot of strength in our vassals. So I think our initial plan is to maybe, maybe take out Wales and then move up to Scotland, maybe fight the Norwegians. Even though they're extremely weak, I guess they don't hold much of actual. I guess you can't really, there's no Norway on the map. Uh, but the Danes are a faction in this as well. Um, so yeah, maybe just conquer England and then fight the French, which I think will be really cool. So let's start off. Let's get these trade agreements going before we really do anything. Nottingham, keeping Nottingham on side is obviously really important. Yep, cool. They want to they do that. What about York? Does York... Uh, York doesn't like me very much. Oh, York doesn't like me at all. Where are they? Oh, they do like me. They love me. Wow, awesome. Join me, York. We welcome... Good, good, good. Getting trade with them will really help out. Who likes me the least? Because they're the, the faction. Nottingham likes me the least. So they're the faction I probably want to marry into. We have so if we arrange a marriage, sure. she's actually... Yeah, she's pretty good as well. A warm fire and warmer women. Yeah, so let's marry. Let's marry into Nottingham. We have our wife there. This will again cement our ties with them. Adrian Charlemagne dropped in. Yeah, look at the improvement from 31 to 140. That's absolutely crazy. Uh, just because we got our marriage in there. Adrian Charlemagne did a really good job of adding in like all these really cool, unique features, which I think will kind of give us a, a little bit of uh, information onto what the next game is going to be, like the next historical game is going to be. Um, I, I feel like, you know, they wouldn't add in all these features for no reason. Would you accept a thousand gold for, for trade? Because getting in their money would be really good, you know. 115 gold, it'll pay itself off in 10 turns. They won't. Okay, cool, we just won't for now, that's fine. Flanders, do you want to trade? Greetings, friend. No, they don't, cool, whatever. So we've got trade with our allies, that's all that matters. Brittany hate us right now, but they only do have, they actually have four provinces, which is five provinces, my god. They're actually really strong. So now let's look at our cities. So to begin with, we are making positive food, decent amount of money, and a decent treasury. So we do need to build an army to begin with. We have our, our faction leader, Offer, uh, right here. He's a politician, so I guess he's probably better at governing stuff than actually fighting. But he does also have Razor Banners, which is a really good ability. Again, this is really good. We've got a good governor right there. A nice supply commander with Warcry. Warcry is always good. We've got an attacker with fear. Fear is no fear is better because fear is actually the morale one, I think. Whereas Warcry, I can't even remember. Relentless attacker, that's pretty good, and a power monger. Let's use the attacker with with the fear ability, I think. Yeah, because I believe fear is the morale, whereas Warcry stops the enemy general from using the ability. So yeah, let's get this guy. He will command my armies. And there you go, you can see we it's all the medieval units, as well as that he has also added in siege equipment now, which is kind of cool, so we can have catapults and all that lovely stuff. Uh, so yeah, let's start our army. It's going to begin with just being absolutely crappy units, but you know, that's what we're going to have to deal with. I'm sure when we'll end this turn, we'll see everyone all of a sudden just spam out units. Uh, also, public order is a real big issue in all my provinces right now, which we do definitely need to sort out. So what I'm going to do is... Oh, that's, that's good. I don't really want to get rid of that because if we get rid of that that farm we will go into negative food but both these provinces are unhappy and it's quite a distance until they are happy yeah seven to build that so i guess we're gonna have to get rid of this guardhouse which is unfortunate because i do really want to have a guardhouse here as it you know gives me a big big bigger garrison but we'll build an army here maybe build a church here churches are really good for for morale uh so yeah public order is a real big issue to start off in this campaign at least as england it is so we can get replenishment technology or public order. We're just going to get public order. We're not going to be at war probably until, you know, five or six turns in. So getting that public order would just be really good. There's our marriage. We married into the king of Nottingham. So, that, you know, that's going to cement that. We do also need a wife here. So maybe trying to get York to marry into my heir would be a good idea as well. We also have several daughters who are almost of age. Yeah, this daughter is really almost of age. That's awesome. We can get another marriage there. Maybe marry into the Holy Roman Empire. You know, I just love that, that, you know, it's such a small feature they've added in where marriages really help out diplomacy. But, you know, it makes such a big difference. Now Nottingham are going to be really loyal to me. And, you know, in this type of campaign, that's really important. I think it's such a good addition. So was this guy any good? He was a scholar, right? So research, oh, that's pretty good. We maybe want, want to sit him in a governor position, but we also, we have a better one, right? We have a master planner. I swear we had one which, was it this guy? Yeah, well from from cultural building. So I guess we'll stick him in Wessex. And we'll stick... Who do else do we have? We want them, we have uh, the, this guy, right? The statesman, whose research rate, which obviously we want as well. 
I guess we'll just stick him in that province. And then for now, we'll just save because I don't want to ruin all my money. But we can now pass some edicts. We will go over growth in this province because the quicker we get up to four, the bigger, quicker we can build a church there. So having growth there is good. And then obviously we all go to the power monger one over here or whatever it's called. But the warrior's rights because it improves the research rate and gives our warriors quicker uh, or more, more training. They get one chevron. So the smartest thing to do if I wanted to slow down maybe a turn would be to just re-recruit my men. Uh, just to re-recruit my men because now every unit I would recruit, recruit would have an extra chevron. So they'd be a little bit better. But I want to just amass a 20 stack as quickly as possible so we can fight out whales. Because everyone is going to be spamming out units as quickly as possible. Everyone's just kind of got their general this turn. And then I imagine next turn they're going to be recruiting men as quickly as possible. Yeah, as you can see, everyone is is sallying forward, trying to get men as quickly as possible. And, you know, filling their ranks. So we actually kind of have a turn ahead of everyone, which is nice. So we will do the same, get some more spearmen. Then probably some billmen. Because they're like pikemen. Then obviously we want the longbows. Longbows are going to be really important. Then like two units of horses. And I guess some more cavalry. Or some more infantry. And then that'll probably be enough. Five turns. Or we could do it in four turns. Four turns of an attack with 16 troops. We'll have to fight a garrison as well. Hmm. I mean, that's probably enough. We'll, we'll play it by ear. We'll see what happens. Uh, you know, our, our current treasury is going down a little. We obviously destroyed that guardhouse. Because we want to get one which just helps public order a ton more. So we could get a hostel. But I think a chapel just helps out so much. Like, why are these guys happy? We could also t get rid of the tax as well. Uh, that would definitely help out if it does become an issue. So taxes are just a huge, a huge difficulty right now. And that's really everything. Because they just have nothing giving them happiness. So yeah, let's get a chapel here. And then we'll talk about getting rid of a tax. Because I can't imagine it yet. It's only like 100 gold. Yeah, this is a bit more. But this is only like 100 gold. So let's, yeah, let's just untax this province. Because yeah, we literally miss out on like 100 gold. And we get an extra 10 food because of it. So let's just undo that. That should, you know, sort the happiness down to 8. That's a lot slower, giving us a lot more time. You know, the growth is it's pretty crazy. That's going to grow very quickly. I and mean, we could get a chapel here, maybe in a second army here. Yeah, a second army here would be nice just to govern our provinces. Because we do have to be very careful of the French. The French are a mighty force. They have mighty allies. And overall, they're pretty scary. Does anyone else have a better opinion of us now? Uh, oh, Aquitaine. Nice. You want to trade with me? I you have salt and wine. Inspired. Nice, good old Aquitaine. So again, it's kind of annoying with the voices being, you know, especially when you get like a barbaric voice for like, I don't know, whoever we're playing against. You know, it is annoying, but there's stuff that people just can't change, unfortunately. Uh, let's go by strength rating. Who, yeah, so it must be like steel, right? The French have gone down to 12, wow. Yeah, like Castile must be first, because I can't imagine, oh, but maybe Hungary in the east are pretty strong. I really do want to... I really want to get this a lot. I really want to get this trade agreement really, really badly. Because, you know, it's just really good. It cements our alliances. Oh, they've gone to war with Flanders already. And the Danes. The Holy Roman Empire are going in. Are going to war. Non-aggression pact. No, with a non-aggression pact, of course. Awesome. And we get to see a ton of their land as well. Yeah, they're at war with Flanders right now. Oh, yeah, well, let's get some non-aggressions as well with our vassals if we can. Welcome no, we can't. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, so as I said, like, you know, it's kind of annoying having the uh, having the, the Nottingham be like, welcome, worthy friends. My salutations and the good wishes of our people to you. You know, him not having a sac your bleu. Would you speak? Uh, so should we get a non-aggression France? France would want a non-aggression, but is that what we want? Because, I mean, if we're making friends with the Holy Roman Empire, uh, Emperor, then really we'll probably want to fight France at some point once we've secured the, the Isles. The Danes we can now see. No, they don't want to trade. They give me nothing in trade anyway. Yeah, okay, cool. That's enough for diplomacy. Food surplus, nice. Everyone's getting more growth. Our war wariness is really low. And again, that's something which is really cool. I love the war wariness. It kind of gives you... I mean, I don't think it's as extreme as I would like it in this campaign. But it, it does still add a lot to the actual campaign itself. Uh, you know, it's an additional feature in Age of Charlemagne. It makes it so you're less likely, because normally in Total War, you're just going to fight an enemy till you destroy them. There's no reason to stop. And, you know, historically speaking, that's not like how many wars are fight, uh, fought. You know, you're not going to get, you know, just one Punic War. There's several wars, you know, you take parts of land and then you make up, you make peace and you strengthen both your kingdoms. 
it's not like just oh you fight them they're destroyed you know it kind of acts as you know less stories to be created and i i i like the way they're going with this and hopefully we'll see it in future historical titles for sure so our next farmland is on the way being built we don't actually have any more money um and our economy is going to go down the shitter right now because we are just spamming out an army um oh damn oh damn so france oh france declared war on me wait I don't know, France declared war on Brittany. I don't really want to go to war with France, if I'm honest. And I don't want these guys to be like, oh, we're not going to join you. They hate Brittany as well, damn. They also hate France. Uh, I'm just going to decline and break my, uh, like, just break these guys as an ally. Because I, I don't have any armies to fight up here in the north. So let's just break our alliance with Brittany, our vassal ship, you know. France can have them. France can eat them up. Obviously, that makes France really strong. But I don't really care. Oh my god, the Holy Roman Empire is just going to war with everyone. They went to war with Pisa and with Venice. They're just trying to eat up everything. I mean, Flanders as well. But yeah, look how big France is as well. We can't contend with that right now. There is no way we can. But Brittany, I know Aquitaine and Brittany have a very similar sigil. A very similar sigil. I guess only one of them will exist very soon. Either Brittany will win with their, their pitiful host or the French, French will. Damn, I wonder how many armies the Holy Roman Empire has for him. Our army is underway. They are building, but we have got a turn ahead of them, so we should be good. Because I want to push into Wales as soon as physically possible. Economy-wise, we can upgrade our church to a priory. That will improve public order. That will actually, I believe, make public order almost almost happy. Our farm is almost done. Good, good, good. Has our church been built over here? Our church is built next turn, and then we will probably stop taxes from there. This city is growing at a pretty fast rate. Oh, no, it's not going to be as quick as I thought it would be. So yeah, let's upgrade the church here. Because we just need to get our provinces happy. Because obviously this army is going to march out very soon. Very, very soon. And it's kind of unfortunate that London isn't the main city. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of just... You know, it's just, they can't change so much of this stuff in the campaign. You know, we kind of just got, get what we're given. Uh, so yeah, let's end the turn again. We're not really doing too much at the moment just trying to uh keep our promises happy and then we will move on Wales. so don't worry we will 100 percent have a battle if it takes me four hours to have a battle which obviously it won't uh we will have a battle and we do not want to fight in winter of course our church is going to be built very soon our farm is going to be built very soon our church is now built here so should we just stop taxes from the city to make it happy because how how bad are, are the yeah it'll pretty much make it happy we could put a military force here we could just upgrade it I just want to keep an eye on here because I want to see how the, the war goes. We need to keep on checking, checking what cities, what if Aquitaine is, is fighting. But everyone is going to war. Oh, the, the Welsh are going to war against each other. That's good for me because I can, like, these two factions are at war. I can swoop in and just fight them whilst their armies are weak. That is very good for me. Yeah, it is definitely, yeah, it's definitely these two factions. Nice. Because, I mean, either way, yeah, either way, I'm happy with the outcome of that. York have amassed a, a fairly large army already, whereas Aquitaine, uh, I mean, not, not, uh, Nottingham, sorry, is uh, is struggling a little bit. Our tech is almost done, so that should kind of boost everyone else into a happy situation, yeah. After that's done, all these provinces will be happy, or at least somewhat happy. I'm not going to upgrade this yet, I want to keep hold of my money, because as you can see, we're making not a large amount at the moment. The taxes are obviously definitely helping us. The upkeep is probably going to start becoming a thing. Especially when we build these knights. How? Yeah, these knights are so expensive. Actually, no, they're the same same cost as pretty much all my infantry. I guess he hasn't really looked into too much of actual uh, units. Probably like all tier 1 units are very similar. Yeah, upkeep. I guess he hasn't really kind of messed around with that too much. I mean, we might as well get another unit, right? Because it's going to be... Yeah, two turns. So two more turns and then we'll go to war. Awesome. We'll just speed our way through that. Our churches should be built. Our fields should be built next turn. That technology is going to help us out so much. An extra four, an extra four deployment uh, happiness. Uh, Do we get it? Yeah, we did get it, but it's, it hasn't helped out as much as I would like. Oh, it's only two, isn't it? Yeah, what am I talking about? So we could go down more trading stuff. Lumber camps. We don't actually have any lumber at the moment. Deep copper mine. Wow, that's pretty good. And more money. But I think we just need to get... The quicker we get to this technology, because he has changed around all these all these uh, technology trees as well. At least I've noticed in the military tree he has. Because originally this was like over here. 
Uh, but yeah, he's made it a lot further back. And I believe he's also changed the names of a lot of these. Uh, yeah, he's changed the name of a lot of these technologies as well, which is cool. It adds in a bit of more, bit more immersion to it. Yeah, a ton of immersion. So cool. We'll get this. It gives us more replenishment. By the time we go to war, we'll probably have that. So that's going to be nice. Ready for battle. And then our leader will go gloriously into battle. One more turn, and then we'll march on the Welsh. Ideally, they would fight each other, but. Whatever, we'll, we'll, we'll allow them just, you know, if we have to fight their army, we will. Their capital is probably going to be strong, but if we smash down the walls, our, our cavalry can just go in and slaughter everything. Yeah, these provinces are now happy, apart from this one, isn't quite happy, but we can upgrade the city, but I really just want that next extra plot of land so we can build a church there. And I guess we'll get a priory, but it's so much of my money. I mean, there's no need. It's not going to get any happier, so we'll just we'll just leave it for now. We have tons of food, so we can actually upgrade. Like we could upgrade London to a uh, to a better court. That would help growth, more wealth, and wealth from agricultural buildings and more a bigger garrison there. Obviously, this will be good as well. Yeah, they they did a really good job with the buildings as well in Age of Charlemagne. Like going back and playing it, it really just shows me it was a really solid campaign, like DLC. Which does give me, as I've mentioned several times in this video, a lot of hope for the future of historical Total Wars. I feel like they tried out a lot of stuff here, which we might see going forward. Oh, they lost a ton of men in that battle. I think they fought a battle, because their army size has not gone up recently. And ours has. So we can actually attack them this turn. I don't see why we wouldn't. We'll declare war. Uh, I guess we'll have to call in our allies. They like me a lot. Nottingham love me because of our marriage. Uh, but yeah, so, yeah, I guess we have to call them into battle no matter what. They do both join my side, go thank God. Because they're... Prepare your souls. You go to meet your ancestors. You go to meet your ancestors. So, uh, the, one of the, like, annoying things about this campaign, because obviously they'll have the garrison as well. Wait, where's their other army? Oh, they have a small navy. Oh, they actually have some, some herdmen. These are Swedish men. Yeah, they actually have some Swedish, more heavy infantry, damn. I mean, I think we can win no matter what. We all just... I mean, we could attack now. We could starve them out a little bit. What's, what's the city actually look like? Because I believe we fought this city when I when I tested it out. Because, you know, the Vans of Power says it's very much not in my favour. But it's just a it's just a basic city with no walls. So I think we can just take this out. They have crossbowmen. We have longbows. The only scary thing is the, is the herdmen. And I guess the Axe Bondiers as well are pretty good. Yeah, they have some decent men. But we have cavalry to counter this. And their general. This is... I don't know. Like, we outnumber them. But our men just aren't that great. Uh, we'll, we'll fight it no matter. We'll, we'll fight it. And if we lose, then that's kind of an embarrassing start to this Let's Play. But I feel like the balance power is, is slightly skewed. I know we do have a lot of decent men. And we really only have spearmen. But again, the only really good men are these three units. Which will slaughter mine. But I can just say use my general and my cavalry to kind of just hammer an ambo into the back. There's no walls of this city, so we can we can use our cavalry very effectively to cut down their archers. We have a lot of archers ourselves, so we just focus down their missiles. Then, I mean, focus down their more elite men because like, obviously this herdman unit is going to be good. It's actually an actual armored unit. We don't have any armored units right now, which kind of questions me how they got the got them. But you know. Whatever, these damn Swedes going into going into Wales. We'll kick them out, don't worry. With our might. Yeah, I mean, having this cavalry as well is just going to be so valuable. Killing their general with the cavalry. And again, we have four units of longbows. That has to count for something. You know, obviously they're only militia longbows, but they're longbows nonetheless. Uh, raining. I mean, rain doesn't really affect me too much, right? It just means that we can't use flaming arrows. We can't ignite ships and buildings and deployables. I mean, that's fine. I don't really care about that. So this Welsh town, oh, the towers are going to be painful. Is this like a... This is a really cool map as well. Yeah, these towers are going to be extremely painful. But we can't burn them, unfortunately. Damn, I'm an idiot. Maybe attacking them would have been a good idea. Because them towers are going to tear me apart. I don't have any siege towers. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a difficult battle, actually. I, I totally forgot about the towers. Our longbows are going to have to literally do work. I'm going to leave my general there. What is my general's ability as well? Is this the right one? Damn, it was the other one. It's Warcry or Zephyr one. Damn, I'm an idiot. But he is also an attacker, so we do get a bit more morale, I believe. 
Yeah, you get a tiny bit more morale. And also because of their chevron as well helps out. Yeah, they get up to 21 morale, which isn't a whole bunch. So we're going to need to take these as soon as possible. Use our cavalry just to smash in and win the day. Okay, cool. Let's start the battle. Archers obviously move forward. Oh my god, our longbows can already hit them. Our longbows are absolutely disgusting. Oh my god, our longbows are so good. Okay, cool. What do we want to shoot at? We want to, we want to shoot at their, their swords over here. Their herdmen and their spears. Obviously their cavalry is going to be annoying as well. Damn. If I knew our, our archers were going to be this good. That good old longbows. We're actually getting shot though. What from? Oh, we're literally just about in range. Let's pull back a little bit. These towers are opening up on a few of my soldiers. But yeah, let's just pepper away at these guys. We've already whittled them down by five. We'll go into heavy shot. Because these spears are pretty good as well. We can take care of this. Yeah, we can take care of this tower pretty easily. And we'll just open up on them. Let's press K. Get some cinematic shots on this. So my plan for these kind of battles. When we're fighting big battles where I need to pay a lot of attention... I think I'm going to be doing a lot of replays on them. Just because I, I feel like if I do a replay, I can get a really cinematic shot. But in these smaller battles where there's not really much to like, you know, much to talk about or anything, we will just go and, you know, just talk about them normally. So, yeah, we'll get rid of this spear bondier unit down pretty low. And then we'll change our archer fire to, to some more of these other units. Because we want to use as much archer fire, uh, or archer, you know, shooting as possible. Why do our men have a French flag? No, our men don't, but their men have a French flag. Our men are all English. Good, good, good. We don't want to be using any of the French. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Archers run. Oh, God. I completely forgot about their, their ships. Completely forgot about their ships. But let's just deal. Our general can go in and deal with them. We've lost a few archers, but not too many. We're about to rout one of their spear units. Good, that's perfect. My god, I completely forgot about that. But our, our English king will be more... Or our general, he's not a king quite yet. His knight unit will be more than enough to cut them down. This is so glorious, playing an actual campaign. If you guys enjoy this, drop a like and a comment. Please, please, please. This is absolutely awesome. Uh, with their fighting their viking units, by the way, they've got round shields. Let's use my, my general unit to get around the back and end this. Because they're, they're doing pretty decently, if I'm honest. And we need these guys to go into actual combat apart from the general. Yeah, we've routed that unit. Good, good, good. We want to focus on killing something a bit more important now. Maybe we'll, we'll send a volley over here just to whittle down these spear units. But we really want to obviously kill the herdman. Uh, we really want to kill the herdman. Yeah, we actually lost a unit of spearmen just because our spearmen are just not going to stand up to these, these Saxon heavy boatmen. I think this is actually an Age of Charlemagne unit, but we'll run them down with our English knights. And that should hopefully route these guys. Damn, I can't believe I brought the wrong ability. I'm so bad. Their spearmen did come back, but if they're going to just keep on routing, that's fine with me. Nice, we routed them, cool. Everyone get back into position. We did lose a, we did lose a big portion of my army. A lot of my general unit got hit down as well from that. My god. That's almost out of ammunition. Good, good, good. I guess we'll advance these guys forward because I want to start shooting the, the, the soldiers in the back now as well. These archers can move up again. I don't mind if they're getting shot by fire arrows, really. Take care of them, crossbow militia. Yeah, you shoot into that. We're not really doing too much damage to these these guys, actually. I thought we'd be doing a, a ton more. We've only really taken out a few of them. Maybe it's because we're on heavy shot and that's not really being that effective. Yeah, let's just, as soon as we take down these guys, that's when we'll advance into the city, I think. Let's reform there. God, I can't believe I, I totally forgot about them, them shipmen coming in. Our king definitely took paper price. Yeah, just shoot as many shots as you can into these guys. These guys are the only unit I'm scared of. They are tier 1 still, though. The general's moving a little bit. There's some more axemen as well there. 
gonna this be... This run, very, very good, though. Very good. They're just not heavily armored, so we need other people to be taking the, the firefight for them. Luckily, a lot of these archers are absorbing a lot of the shots. As we continue just to shoot the enemy. Our knights are obviously going to have to get very close. Just out of range of that tower will be perfect. Thank you very much. I'm actually going to move these archers, or at least some of these archers, up a little bit. And we'll click play again. So I want them to be taking the shots from the, from the castle, or from the towers. So let's charge these guys on. I get these guys so close. Like as soon as they move these soldiers. Nice. A lot of their soldiers are actually... They're sending fire arrows. We can maybe route these guys. Shoot there. Like just one volley of fire arrows. Might be able to lower them around enough. Let's get these guys around the side as well. As the billmen move up. Spearmen have gone in to do butcher's work. Nice. Take them out. Then we push on to the city center. Their crossbows are now shooting at me, which is scary. But come on, boys. Push on. We have a ton of soldiers here. Nice. Push on. Destroy that. I'll send one unit of spears to go deal with the tower. Everyone else push on and take care of these spear militia. Because it also allows us to get around the flank here as well. Once we take care of them. Bill militia moving up. We want to get spears in here as soon as possible. You guys still shoot there. You guys still taking down them axemen. Nice. They do actually have a fresh unit of axes. We want to immediately focus down. She actually killing an entire unit would be pretty nice. Nice. We actually managed to rout all of the units here. Good, good, good. Now get down on smashing that barricade down. The billman moving in is going to be really good. The general, we can probably sneak up here. We want to take out this tower as soon as possible. The archers still coming in and shooting. Our cavalry, I really want to move into the city, but I think we have to wait a little bit longer until these guys have moved up. Yeah, move in. Our general is moving up as well. The tower is going down. As soon as we've broken down this, come on, break it down. Break it down. That will allow us to get so many men up. God, yeah, we're getting slaughtered there. Let's just retreat for a little bit. We do have more reinforcements to send. Send one unit around the side. Archer's still shooting the side, managing to route one unit of these axemen. Good, good, good. Yeah, our general is just getting slaughtered by the missile fire, so get him the hell out of there. I think our cavalry is going to have to make a push for it now. I think we really need to get them in there. Setting up more reinforcements. We need to break this tower as soon as possible. This tower is about to go down, which is going to open up an entire avenue for my men. Come on, just smash it down. You must be close. We can actually send men round the flank as well, which we will do. That's going to be hurting morale of the enemy forces. I'm hoping my cavalry can just literally push through here. Doesn't look like... Doesn't look like they're going to be able to. Fuck. That's really bad for us. We're doing a good job, actually. Let's pull them out, though. They're going to get slaughtered being pulling that pulled out, though. Cool. These guys can all come around now. Good, good, good. We do have spearmen. Oh, they're actually beating them. You stay there. You go and help out. This unit come around the side. We want to completely outflank them. We have more men to send in. Because we're going to be getting, obviously, slaughtered here. The arrow fire is obviously going to be killing a load of my men. I think they're going to be killing enough of the enemy men to make it worth it. Cavalry is coming in. Slaughter these crossbowmen. God, this is a really close battle. Not having my general up here is really painful as well. Having the spearmen coming in is going to be helpful. Uh, what do we kill? Do we kill this? I think we kill this instead of the, the archers. Nice. We're breaking through here. Push on. Push on, my knights. You are, you are obviously knights, but I need you guys to fight hard. Cavalry moving on. This is going to be huge into the back of these spearmen. Absolutely beautiful. Push on, my brave, brave Englishmen. We need the knights to break them. If our knights can break them, we have halberdiers here. Nice. We're doing a brilliant job. Good, good, good job. Considering they had a lot better men than us, this is going pretty well. We've completely overwhelmed them there. We've broken them there. Push on. We need our archers to hold fire, I think, for a second. Yeah, our archers hold fire. We're breaking all of them. Our knights run them down. These knights get onto their general. We've got spearmen coming in there. Archers hold fire. Actually, archers shoot their general for a second. And yeah, our, our overwhelming forces will push on and kill the rest of their, their men. Good job. Now it's just killing their general. 
which we can definitely do a good job of. The archer's coming in as well, putting down hurt on the enemy, the enemy Welsh general. Good damn, that battle was way too close to, to how, how long I wanted it to be. We'll get these archers just to shoot their routing units now. Get our general round to come help out and kill these crossbows. These crossbows are doing a, a pretty solid job at, at pushing me back, if I'm honest. I wasn't expecting them to do this well. Some of my men are routing, that's fine. Got cavalry coming in to help smash these crossbows into the side. Nice, look at the damage they're causing. Absolutely awesome. So this battle wasn't as cinematic just because I really did not want to lose the first battle. But going forward, I'll make sure I do a lot more cinematic stuff. We'll do slow-mos and all that. All that glorious stuff for the rest of the battle. So moving on to the general. My general was still well out of here. Even though we've killed a lot of the towers, we can probably bring him up now. God, my archers definitely were the MVPs of this battle. Oh my god, their general is still not dying. Kill him already. For the love of god, kill him. Let's bring up my general this way, actually. Let's bring him down and then across, just so he's further out of artillery range. And he's crossbows as well, man. Let's get a cavalry charge into the rear. I should be, like, probably surrounding. So we're going to lose a few men by pulling out of this combat, but it should be okay. We've got spearmen coming around the side. Yeah, their general has nowhere to go now. The halberdiers, uh, or the billmen, I should say, are going to be pushing in now. This is so awesome, fighting with medieval units on the campaign map. It really is. Hold the banner high for the King of England. Against the, the Welsh Kurds. Yeah, what a, what a good battle there was here. The men men fought for bravely. Lives. I mean, the battle is not over yet, but we have now routed their general. That's good. My own general can chase him down and kill him. And that's going to rout the rest of their men. Good. Victory was ours. We don't need to. We don't need to do anything else. Uh, I might save the battle just in case I want to get a good thumbnail because I can now do that because the battle is not going to crash. Um, so yeah, that was a fairly long battle. Sorry if you guys got a bit bored just because of the archer fire, but I wanted to soften them up as much as possible. Um, considering they did have, you know, some pretty good men, surprisingly, and I only had spear militia. Uh, but yeah, we only lost 840 men. I guess that's a fair amount, but we did kill 1,500, so. Longbow's doing really good. Our mounted sergeant's getting a ton of kills. Even our general doing good. And obviously our build, build men doing nicely as well. So now we've taken this city. The question is, what do we want to do with it? Do we want to hold it ourselves? Do we want to, do we want to make another vassal? Or do we want to raise it and just abandon it and destroy it off the map? That is the question right through the stomach. I love it. So what do we want to do with this? By the looks of it, yeah, it does have resources. We destroyed everything. Nice. Uh, do we get any experience on any more of our men? Our cavalry got a level up. Our general got an experience. I can't believe I got the wrong general, though. I might change him out for someone else. Because I, I don't. his ability isn't really great at all. Unless he's coming up against a king. So we can sack it, subjugate them, which will help our unit replenishment. We could occupy, again, helping our units replenishment. Loot can, can occupy. We don't really need the money right now. So I'm just going to occupy it. I think taking this resource will be really good because, you know, it gives us more trade, uh, more trade ability. More people will want to trade with us. But as well as that, it kind of also cements our power in, in England. Wow, they took out this province as well. Go York! York are expanding, yeah, because my vassals are expanding as well. So I want to make sure I have enough uh, I have enough actual land to fight these guys if they ever rebel against me. Because, yeah, Nottingham has two provinces, whereas York now have three. So they're definitely growing. I wonder how Brittany are doing as well. Brittany are still holding. They are still holding. None of these provinces have fallen to the French. Yeah, or, or any of their allies. We also have to maybe be careful of this province as well. They're, they could easily march on me if they wanted to. So we will, yeah, oh my god, York have two armies now as well. So this guy has leveled up, but I kind of want to place him. I mean, having this, this ability is really good. And I guess these are going to be pretty good as well when I, when I kind of upgrade them. But it's just his fear ability is just so useless. So I, I might honestly replace him. I can't for whatever reason. Oh yeah, we can also name our armies as well. That's kind of cool. Change our banners. That battle looks pretty cool. So nice. We've taken the city. So the city is actually decent as well. It has a, it's a nice iron mine. So we'll repair that, obviously. I know we'll just let them repair. They repair slowly by themselves. 
Apart from the fishing, we'll get the fishing wharf back up. But yeah, these will just let repair by themselves. The squalor is kind of a bit appalling, but that's fine. And then that actually gives York an entire province. Although uh, Nottingham holds the majority of that province. And then up there to the north, the Scottish holds some of that. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go and end this episode here. It's been like a 40-something minute episode. Pretty good. We opened up by taking an enemy city. That was really awesome. So if you guys enjoyed this and want to see more, please drop a like and a comment down below. If we could break like 500 likes on this Let's Play, that would be absolutely awesome. So if you guys want to do that, uh, make sure to do it. Would you guys like to see the battle mod as well? I'm thinking I'm going to try it out for the next episode just to make combat a little bit longer in the actual melee. You know, at the moment, we're going to be using weak troops so they're not going to be around for much longer. You know, They're not going to be fighting forever because they're only militia. But when we finally get to more elite units, they will be fighting for a lot longer. So maybe I'll t turn it off then. I guess we'll just see and we'll just mess around with it and see what's good. So yeah, long live the Kingdom of England and I'll see you guys next time. And fish out. Which is a really good for, for morale. Uh, so yeah, public order is a real big issue to start off in this campaign. At least it's England it is. So we can get replenishment technology or public order. We're just going to get public order. We're not going to be at war probably until, you know, five or six turns in. So getting that public order would just be really good. There's our marriage. We married into the king of Nottingham. So, that you know, that's going to cement that. We do also need a wife here. So maybe trying to get York to marry into my heir would be a good idea as well. We also have several daughters who are almost of age. Yeah, this daughter is really almost of age. That's awesome. We can get another marriage there. Maybe marry into the Holy Roman Empire. You know, I just love that. That You know, it's such a small feature they've added in where marriages really help out diplomacy. But, you know, it makes such a big difference. Now Nottingham are going to be really loyal to me. And, you know, in this type of campaign, that's really important. I think it's such a good addition. So was this guy any good? He was a scholar, right? So research, well, that's pretty good. We maybe want, want to stick him in a governor position. But we also, we have a better one, right? We have a master planner. I swear we had one which, was it this guy? Yeah, well, from, from cultural building. So I guess we'll stick him in Wessex. And we'll stick, who else do we have? We want the, we have the, the, this guy, right? The statesman, whose research rate, which obviously we want as well. I guess we'll just stick him in that province. And then for now, we'll just save because I don't want to ruin all my money. But we can now pass some edicts. We will go the growth in this province because the quicker we get up to four, the, bigger, the quicker we can build a church there. So having growth there is good. And then obviously we all go to the power monger one over here or whatever it's called, the, the warrior's rights because it improves the research rate. And gives our warriors quicker uh, or more more training. They get one chevron. So the smartest thing to do if I wanted to slow down maybe a turn. Would be to just re-recruit my men. Uh, just to re-recruit my men. Because now every unit I would recruit, recruit would have an extra chevron. So they'd be a little bit better. But I want to just amass a 20 stack as quickly as possible. So we can fight out whales. Because everyone is going to be spamming out units as quickly as possible. Everyone's just kind of got their general this turn, and then I imagine next turn they're going to be recruiting men as quickly as possible. Yeah, as you can see, everyone is is sallying forward, trying to get men as quickly as possible, and, you know, filling their ranks. So we actually kind of have a turn ahead of everyone, which is nice. So we will do the same, get some more spearmen, then probably some billmen, because they're like pikemen. Then obviously we want the longbows. Longbows are going to be really important. Then like two units of horses, and I guess some more cavalry. Or some more infantry. And then that'll probably be enough. Five turns. We could do it in four turns. Four turns of an attack with 16 troops. We'll have to fight a garrison as well. Hmm. I mean, that's probably enough. We'll, we'll play it by ear. We'll see what happens. Uh, you know, our, our current treasury is Romany type castles. So hopefully we'll, that'll kind of add immersion to the game. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying, like, there's a ton more vassals in the game. So I believe England have the Duchy of Br uh, Brittany as their ally. Uh, we'll skip back because that's just the Age of Charlemagne intro, which we don't need. And also, this is the same as, uh, this is Mercia's intro. So obviously, it's Age of Charlemagne. It's extremely hard to mod Attila campaign. So the fact that they've kind of got this much detail in already, you know, you kind of just have to put up with all the, the additional Age of Charlemagne stuff. You know, we got like this... The mission issues, like a lot of the, the grand missions will be like, you know, transform Mercia into the Kingdom of England. But we you know, we already are the Kingdom of England. But you kind of just have to put up with it, you know, and just enjoy the campaign as, as you can now recruit medieval units. And it pretty much is, you know, the best we're going to get for a little while until medieval kingdoms gets out their grand campaign. But yeah, as I was saying, I can kind of show you as I say it now. If we go to diplomacy, we can see that as the Kingdom of England, I have three vassals. The, the Duchy of Brittany... 
we have Nottingham and we have York. And realistically, York and Nottingham are probably both stronger than me. And Brittany as well are probably all stronger than me, you know, just size-wise, wealth-wise. So keeping them on side, keeping the, the campaign, you know, you know, keeping my vassals on side is going to be so important in this game. Obviously, taking out, like, one of them at a time just to expand my own borders could definitely be a good idea. But realistically, we want to try and make uh, make them as good friends as possible because we do have sold some territory in Normandy. And, you know, the French are massive. The French have a, such a strong um, strong empire starting off. And they also have, you know, Aquitaine on them, And I believe they also have Toulouse uh, down here somewhere. The Holy Roman Empire has a ton of battles. They have Milan. They have the Swiss. They have Saxony and Bavaria all onto them as well. They are the strongest faction to begin with. Um, then I believe, oh no, the French are only the third strongest, so who is, is it Spain? I don't think we can even find Spain yet. Yeah, Spain have not been discovered yet, unfortunately, but yeah, I imagine, because we're what? We're the seventh strongest faction to begin with, but we do have a lot of strength in our vassals. So I think our initial plan is to maybe, maybe take out Wales, and then move up to Scotland, maybe fight the Norwegians. Even though they're extremely weak, I guess they don't hold much of actual, I guess you can't, really, there's no Norway on the map. Uh, but the Danes are a faction in this as well. Um, so yeah, maybe just conquer England and then fight the French, which I think will be really cool. So let's start off. Let's get these trade agreements going before we really do anything. Nottingham, keeping Nottingham on side is obviously really important. Yep, cool. They want to they do that. What about York? Does York... Uh, York doesn't like me very much. Oh, York doesn't like me at all. Where are they? Oh, they do like me. They love me. Wow, awesome. Join me, York. We were... Hey, what's up guys, it's Fish here and welcome back to 1078 Medieval Wars. If you don't know what this is, basically it is a modification which adds in all the units from Medieval Kingdoms into the Attila Total War Age of Charlemagne campaign. So we actually have a mini Medieval campaign now, which is really, really awesome. So I want a massive shout out to the modders who made this mod and imported all the units from Medieval Kingdoms. And obviously a massive shout out to Warman and his team, the guys actually working on Medieval Kingdoms is absolutely awesome there is actually a new link for the mod and a mod page for it so i'll leave that in the link in the description so if you downloaded the previous one there is a new one now so make sure to go down and re-update your game so i asked you guys what faction you wanted me to play as as you can as you can see at the top you can play as a whole range of different factions and i held out a voting it was really really close but the factions in the end i think there was like a point in it was between the holy roman empire and the kingdom of england and i always like to have somewhat of a say in my campaign so I took the top two and I decided what one I think would be the best let's play. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing as the Kingdom of England. They are really awesome. Obviously, I'm English, so that's always good. And, I, you know, I just feel like they have the largest unit roster, so that'll make for the most interesting gameplay uh, campaign. Just because we'll have so many different units, knights, longbows, and cavalry. It, it's just going to be really, really exciting. As well as that, I'm using one other mod which reduces the squalor or changes the squalor and happiness, how that works. So I'll leave that in the link in the description. There's also a battle modifier which slows down the battles, which I might use. I need to test it out first, but we might use that as well just for some more interesting battles. It also changes like cavalry and longbows around quite a lot, which I think will be quite interesting. But I want to test it out first before we start. So England have some unique traits. I'm not sure if this is actually the uh, the the previous faction. I can't remember what faction. Mercy. I'm not sure if this is Mercy's traits or what. Uh, but yeah, basically when we're uh, when we fight a defensive battle, we will get double replenishment after that battle, which is really good. And as well as that, we get extra income from every unit we destroy, which I, I'm more than happy to take. We'll have our knights run down the enemy. Uh, which will be cool. So yeah, we're playing on very hard, obviously. I don't like playing on Legendary because Legendary, I feel like it just gets rid of a, a whole bunch of stuff and doesn't really make the enemy that much harder. It just kind of gives them unfair bonuses. So we'll be playing on very hard. It should definitely be interesting. And the interesting thing about England as a faction is a lot of their strength comes from their vassals. So I believe he's made it because he's changed the way diplomacy works and the starting diplomacy for all the factions and the start positions. And, and they also have another mod in this mod, which changes the campaign cities to look a lot more medieval with the, the round turrets instead of the, the square, like kind of more... Welcome. Getting in trade with them will really help out. Who likes me the least? Because they're the, the faction. Nottingham likes me the least. So they're the faction I probably want to marry into. We have so if we arrange a marriage, sure. she's actually... Yeah, she's pretty good as well. A warm fire. 
and Rome are women. Yeah, so let's marry. Let's marry into Nottingham. We have our wife there. This will again cement our ties with them. Adrian Charlemagne drops in. Yeah, look at the improvement from 31 to 140. That's absolutely crazy. Uh, just because we got our marriage in there. Adrian Charlemagne did a really good job of adding in like all these really cool, unique features, which I think will kind of give us a, a little bit of uh, information onto what the next game is going to be, like the next historical game is going to be. Um, I, I feel like, you know, they wouldn't add in all these features for no reason. Would you accept a thousand gold for, for trade? Because getting in their money would be really good, you know. 115 gold will pay itself off in 10 turns. They won't. Okay, cool. We just won't for now. It's fine. Flanders, do you want to trade? Greetings, friend. No, they don't. Cool, whatever. So we've got trade with our allies. That's all that matters. Brittany hate us right now. But they only do have... They actually have four provinces, which is five provinces. My God. They're actually really strong. So now let's look at our cities. So to begin with, we are making positive food, decent amount of money, and a decent treasury. So we do need to build an army to begin with. We have our, our faction leader, Offa, uh, right here. He's a politician, so I guess he's probably better at governing stuff than actually fighting. But he does also have Razor Banners, which is a really good ability. Again, this is really good. We've got a good governor right there. A nice supply commander with Warcry. Warcry is always good. We've got an attacker with fear. Fear is no fear is better because fear is actually the morale one, I think. Whereas Warcry, I can't even remember. Relentless attacker, that's pretty good, and a power monger. Let's use the attacker with with the fear ability, I think. Yeah, because I believe fear is the morale, whereas Warcry stops the enemy general from using the ability. So yeah, let's get this guy. He will command my armies. And there you go, you can see we it's all the medieval units, as well as that he has also added in siege equipment now, which is kind of cool, so we can have catapults and all that lovely stuff. Uh, so yeah, let's start our army. It's going to begin with just being absolutely crappy units, but you know, that's what we're going to have to deal with. I'm sure when we'll end this turn, we'll see everyone all of a sudden just spam out units. Uh, also, public order is a real big issue in all my provinces right now, which we do definitely need to sort out. So what I'm going to do is... Oh, that's, that's good. I don't really want to get rid of that because if we get rid of that that farm we will go into negative food but both these provinces are unhappy and it's quite a distance until they are happy yeah seven to build that so i guess we're gonna have to get rid of this guardhouse which is unfortunate because i do really want to have a guardhouse here as it you know gives me a big big bigger garrison but we'll build an army here maybe build a church here church is going down a little we obviously destroyed that guardhouse because we want to get one which just helps probably quarter a ton more so we could get a hostel but I think a chapel just helps out so much. Like, why are these guys happy? We could also t get rid of the tax as well. Uh, that would definitely help out if it does become an issue. So taxes are just a huge, a huge difficulty right now. And that's really everything. Because they just have nothing giving them happiness. So yeah, let's get a chapel here. And then we'll talk about getting rid of a tax. Because I can't imagine it yet. It's only like 100 gold. Yeah, this is a bit more. But this is only like 100 gold. So let's, yeah, let's just untax this province. Because yeah, we literally miss out on like 100 gold. And we get an extra 10 food because of it. So let's just undo that. That should, you know, sort the happiness down to 8. That's a lot slower, giving us a lot more time. You know, the growth is it's pretty crazy. That's going to grow very quickly. I and mean, we can get a chapel here. Maybe in a second army here. Yeah, a second army here would be nice just to govern our provinces. We do have to be very careful of the French. The French are a mighty force. They have mighty allies. And overall, they're pretty scary. Does anyone else have a better opinion of us now? Uh, oh, Aquitaine. Nice. You want to trade with me? You have salt and wine. Nice. Good old Aquitaine. So again, it's kind of annoying with the voices being, you know, especially when you get like a barbaric voice for like, I don't know, whoever we're playing against. You know, it is annoying, but there's stuff that people just can't change, unfortunately. Uh, let's go by strength rating. Who? Yeah, so it must be like Castile, right? The French have gone down to 12. Wow. Yeah, like Castile must be first. Because I can't imagine... Oh, but maybe Hungary in the east are pretty strong. I really do want to... I really want to get this a lot. I really want to get this trade agreement really, really badly. Because, you know, it's just really good. It cements our alliances. Oh, they've gone to war with Flanders already. And the Danes. The Holy Roman Empire are going in. Are going to war. Non-aggression pact. No, with a non-aggression pact, of course. Awesome. And we get to see a ton of their land as well. Yeah, they're at war with Flanders right now. Oh, yeah, well, let's get some non-aggressions as well with our vassals if we can. Welcome no, we can't. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, so as I said, like, you know, it's kind of annoying having the uh, having the, the Nottingham be like, Welcome, worthy friends. My salutations and the good wishes of our people to you. You know, him not having a sacky bleu. What would you speak? 
Uh, so should we get a non-aggression France? France would want a non-aggression, but is that what we want? Because, I mean, if we're making friends with the Holy Roman Empire, uh, Emperor, then really we'll probably want to fight France at some point once we've secured the, the Isles. The Danes we can now see. To your no, they don't want to trade. They, they give me nothing in trade anyway. Yeah, okay, cool. That's enough for diplomacy. Food surplus, nice. Everyone's getting more growth. 